Welcome to the Ambient iPad. It's been a while since I've used the wind synth, so in this video, I'm going to do a wind synth ambient jam. Signal Chain is the Roland Aerophone AE20 wind synth. Its stereo output goes into a Universal Audio Volt 276 interface that communicates back and forth with the iPad Pro. I've got a little setup in AUM here. I'm only using two apps. I've got Brambos's Gauss for some looping and Quantivox's Spatializer just to make the stereo field wider. The Aerophone has classic and great Roland and Boss effects built right in, so I've really never felt a need to bypass those. So I'm going to do this loop. I'll do some soloing over it. We'll get the sequencer bit going in Gauss so you get some rhythmic um, play going here. Not going to go too in-depth in this. I've done this in other videos, and it's been out for a while, so there's a lot of videos that uh, cover this. But as I'm going along, I will kind of talk about some tips and tricks that I've uh, discovered. I like to use like a nine-second delay, anything between a six and nine-second delay loop. And, uh, you know, you can easily overdub. There's one little downfall here with recording that I'll demonstrate as well. But first, let me just play some of the wind synth sounds that I'm going to use. Uh, kind of traditional synth lead sounds, I guess, is the best way to think about it. So I'll just scroll through a few here. And that's a hard lead. Another hard lead. I say hard lead because there's different categories on the wind synth. Um, I'm in the hard lead category. There's also a soft lead. Uh, let's get some classic saw wave. You hear those effects. Go low. So nice effects, basic effects, and given it's going to be looping, they're really going to start adding up. Let me just get right into it. I mean, that's kind of the, the setup here. I do have a high-pass filter on that filters out the lows from 80 hertz down, I find, with the wind synth and also the basses that I use. I have to do that or it just doesn't make it too muddy, but sometimes it just kind of overdrives an AUM, really any host, so it just makes it easier. Plus, you really can't hear those anyway, so... I mean, most people are not <laughs> hooking this up to a full-range stereo system to, to listen to these videos, so particularly uh, for smaller speakers, you can really start to overdrive them uh, if the bass is too high. So I've got this set up with a nine-second loop. Um, I'll use a little loop decay in the end to kind of gradually fade it. The sequencer again. I've got uh, the delay and just a few things set up here, uh, but it's pretty much standard out of the box. Um, always, I always turn overdub on so I can so I can overdub. But let's get going here. Got record on. I'll wait till it comes around the next time, and I'm just going to put down a, a couple of, you know, just a few layers so you can hear. So it picks it up back around. thing going here in the back. So this is only two sounds. I've done maybe three notes on each, except that little melody line. I find for variety, if you do just like two or three notes for each sound and then keep moving on and adding, it just adds a lot more depth and color. One more sound, one more note. So I put that kind of note, looks for a little 
looks for a little, it adds a little tension, looks for a little release, which you then get kind of on that next round. But so, three, four sounds, maybe, other than the little melodic lines, maybe seven, six, seven notes. And that gets pretty dense. So now that we've got that going, let me just move this so I have a lead sound on tap. So if I want to do a lead at this point, I would just hit record. Don't know if you heard that, but it's just a minor audible thump. And now I can just play over it. Now to do this, I'm going to raise the volume a little on the wind synth, only because it would just get lost over that loop. If I want to bring recording in, I hit record again. Again, you get a little bit of a thump. You turn it off. So let's get the, the syncopated kind of sequencer going. Just feeds off, feeds off, syncs with the tempo that is set up in AUM. Now you've got three different trigger points here and three different steps. I just have one going. Now, the other cool thing is if you don't have the delay going at the time, you know, you get this very syncopated. So you don't need to use the other steps or triggers. What I usually do is I just raise the delay time and the delay amount. And then, of course, you can do some soloing over this. Actually, I turned up the volume. I don't need to do that when it's kind of doing the sequencer. just solo or do whatever. Now, there's a few ways to come out of this. And also you can, you know, kind of use the filter modulation and the cutoff. Let's get those back. So to come out of this, you can just kind of go, you know, turn it off. It's not very, um, not very seamless. But let me demonstrate that. If you hit it on the note, it's okay. Or let's go back to it. Another way that you can come out of it without even touching that is just to use the attack and the decay on the sequencer. So slowly just scoping it here, it starts smearing those notes. It's not syncopated anymore. So that's essentially the same sound as if I turn the sequencer off, but it's can make it more gradual. At this point, the attack's not really doing much. And then, can just do, let's um, just find the lead here. What I'm gonna do is now I'm gonna move the loop decay up only to about nine or 10%, and it will start, let's just do 9% start slowly fading into the background and then you can just kind of like do a lead or something let's do something atmospheric over this pad as that's going down get really ambient yeah, for that. So that'll keep fading into the background. I mean, you can push it up more to really have it fade. But, you know, just a few notes, just a few sounds. 
You got this nice kind of ambient loop, ambient soundscape. You can really do a lot of different things over it. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna just zero out everything again, get rid of the loop, start from scratch on the, on the Gauss app, and I'll do a jam. So let me let that fade in the background. <clears throat> so as you can tell, just a few simple notes. I think I use three or four different sounds and a couple of notes within each of those. And you still get this really, really evolving soundscape. 
Thanks for watching, thanks for listening, and good luck with your own music.